In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today, as you probably all know, is Super Bowl Sunday. I know it's on your minds. Whether you avoid the game or not, you've heard about it on the news, you've heard about it just by turning on the TV or reading the newspaper or whatever you may do, listen to the radio, it's there, is it not? Miami, Florida, Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers. It's there, right? There's some things if you actually do watch the game that you might see. You'll see commercials and you'll see a game and also you might see this. Right? Every game has a penalty in it, doesn't it? I've never seen a football game yet without a penalty. Right? They all have them. A foul, a wrong that one has committed against the rules. And they all have their cost. For instance, offsides is a five-yard penalty. Or false start is a five-yard penalty. Or holding is a 10-yard penalty at the spot of the foul. Or we get more complicated, pass interference. Well, in, in professional football, it's the spot of the foul. In college, it's different, though, and I don't want to get into that here. But they all have their cost, do they not? If you think about life, it's very similar to the game of football, but this is life. We hear the words from the epistle this morning, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Therefore, he had to be made in every respect like the brothers, in order that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God to make expiation for the sins of the people. For as you know it, when we do things wrong, when we commit fouls against our fellow neighbor and against God, it's more than just a yardage penalty. What does God tell us? The wages of sin or the cost of sin is death. Not a game we're talking about here. This is real life. But God became one of us. God made himself to be one of us. In Sunnyvale, Texas, in a church in that little town, in the Sunday school classroom, the teacher talked about Jesus, as in every Sunday school classroom. And she said that Jesus was God, but yet he was man in every way. That when, ba when Mary held the baby Jesus, she did everything to baby Jesus that your mother did for you. She bathed him. She fed him. She burped him. She even changed his diapers. And when she said that, the entire Sunday school classrooms, their mouth went wide open. Silence. Until little Bethany popped off and said, ending the silence and said, isn't that a little too personal? Yes, the point, though, is made. God became one of us. He came as our substitute to take the penalty for our sin. And what is the penalty for our sin? The cost or wages of sin is death. That's what our God did for us. The passage this morning is quite interesting because... The words that are used, especially the one word which the ESV, which we use in our worship, is translating the word propitiation. And if I'd ask every one of you here individually what that word means, would you get it right? Propitiation comes from the word Alaska's thigh. And the word means to satisfy, to render well disposed, to conciliate, to propitiate, to expiate. 
Maybe you don't quite get the sense of what this word means. So let's turn to other trans-English text, okay, will we? First of all, the American Standard Version, or the English Standard Version, which we read this morning in our text, which Johanna read, was propitiate, or which means in English, better English for us, to win the favor of God by doing something. In other words, we must appease God's anger and wrath and try to gain his favor. Propitiate. Now you learned a new word this morning, propitiate, which you probably heard all your life but didn't really quite understand what it meant. Propitiate. Other translations translate otherwise. The American Heritage Version, which is a new translation from the Wisconsin Lutheran Synod, translates it, pay for the sins. Or also, God's Word, which is a more literal translation, to make peace with God. Or another one, Good News Translation, forgiven. There are other trans. Notice there's a different word every time. In other translations, King James Version, which many of you grew up with, make reconciliation. Or the New International Version or the New English Translation to make atonement. And then there's the Wycliffe Bible, which says to be merciful. Another translation, the New Revised Standard Version says to make a sacrifice of atonement. And then the Revised Standard Version has expiate. To expiate, which means to pay the penalty for something you did wrong. When a football team commits an error or does a wrong or commits a penalty, the cost of that is usually yardage and sometimes even to be thrown out of the game. This is life that we're talking about. And the wages of sin is death. And what does our God do for us? He sends his son, Jesus Christ, to become one of us in every respect, to be a faithful and merciful high priest. That through his sacrifice, giving up his life upon the cross, he pays the penalty for our sin. The wages of sin is death. And God pays that penalty by sending his son Jesus to die for us. And because of his death, God no longer looks upon us with wrath and condemnation. Because of his death, our sins are forgiven. Because of his death, you and I no longer need to fear death and the devil. And because of his resurrection, we have everlasting life. If you noticed in our readings this morning, they're all about sacrifice, giving up something for something else. In the Old Testament reading, Elkanah and Hannah, the married couple, had their child Samuel. And because they were barren so for many, many years, Hannah prayed and prayed that God would give them a child, and she offered him up as a sacrifice. No, not to kill him, but gave him up to serve God in his temple all the days of Samuel's life. And then in the gospel lesson this morning, Joseph and Mary take the child Jesus to offer up a sacrifice, which is, which is required in the law of their day and age. Two turtle doves or two pigeons for every child who first enters through the womb. Sacrifice. But the epistle, our text this morning, reminds us exactly who we are and the God we serve. A God of sacrifice who gives himself up into death to pay the sins for us that we may have everlasting life. As we continue through life, may we remember who we are, and especially the God we serve, who loves us so much, who expiates for us, pays the penalty of our sin for us, that through his death and resurrection, we have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen.